Are these, these mixed cloths? Yes, of course. All of them? Um, so you're not, you're not, not the trainers? Yeah, yeah, of course. Right, so you're not, you're not following Old Testament law, bro? The kind of ignorance amongst the Israelites and the Hebrew Israelites and all of that group of people is holding the black community back. I'm not black. You are, you've just applied thou shalt not murder yeah. to anything. Yes. Right, but that's not what the Old Testament does because the Old Testament commands the Levitical priesthood to kill bulls, rams and pigeons. There's a difference between killing and murder. Right, show me in scripture where it says you should stone someone for killing a sheep. Can a man die for your sins? Yes. How? Simple. If you look at your hadiths, I, whoa, I'm not missing. Okay, fine, I'll answer that question. The way, I'm going to answer it through a way that deals with a Muslim argument. Okay? That's fine. God can die for your sins. How? Because he can take the offence that you have given to him and he can put it onto someone else. In the same way that in the Old Testament, God allowed a system of sacrifices of animals as a way of atoning for the sins of Israel but he hated on the Day of Atonement. But he hated human sacrifice. That's why he wanted to kill all the people who uh, worshipped Malek. Where, where are you coming from, bro? What, what, what is your position? You say you're not a Muslim. What are you? The, um, I'm just a follower of the Most High, the creator and universe of the... of The creator, uh, the creator of universe yep. and um, yep. the Holy One yep. of Israel. Yep. And, uh, yep. Yeah, the creator of every plane of existence. Right. So now, let, now, would you agree that God does establish the idea that the sins of the people can be transferred onto a creature? Yes and no. Does God do that in the Old Testament? Yes and no. Yes and no. So, Go on, explain your yes and no. So, basically, he is able, as he said, he puts the sins of the, he puts their iniquity, he visits the iniquity of the fathers yes. by cursing their children, yes. even the third and fourth generation yes. that hate them. Yes. Right? So, he is able to do that. However, it does say in Ezekiel, and it does say in many, and even in Deuteronomy as well, that no man can die for the sin. So he can, so he can punish the child. Yeah. He can punish the child, but he won't kill the child for right. the sins of the fathers. Yeah. Okay. So let me reply to that, because when Christ said, "No man," sure, 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 first, let, have you got the reference? Um, it's in the Old Testament, isn't yeah, it's it? In the Old Testament. Yeah. So, so, so yeah. There you go. Yeah. yeah. But it's in as well. Yes. So now let me address that point. Yeah. Because when it says that no man can die for the sins of another, yeah. okay, which incidentally already puts it above all of the surrounding. You're saying you follow the Bible. Do you believe? The Old Testament. You, so you reject the New Testament. I just yes. want to be clear. Okay. Yes. So as a Christian, I believe in the New Testament. Yes. And I believe that Jesus Christ was not merely a man. He was a man. He was a man. Yeah. But he was also divine. Yes. And the reason why that humanity yeah. could die for the sins of the world yeah. is because that humanity yeah. has the value of the divinity that it is united to in Christ. No man, no mere man can die for the sins of another. Why? Because your life is equal in value to my life. But imagine a humanity that was united to the very divinity of God. That humanity would be worth all of our lives. Agreed? Maybe. Right. So, wait, so that's so, the position of the Christian. That's so, why Jesus Christ can die because, for all sins. So you're basically saying because he was so divine, he was so divine. He was divine. Because he was divine. Yes. His humanity was now equal in value to all of our lives. Every human being that ever lived, yeah. the fall, ignore him. If you talk to him, you stop talking to me. I do not talk to him. So if you talk to him, I stop talking to you. Right. I don't talk to him. That's fine. Talk to me. Ignore him. Right. So in terms of the Christian faith, we say that the life of Christ is worth the life of every human being that ever existed, ever and ever will exist. His value, the, the value of his humanity is even greater than all of the humans combined and all angels 
and all other principalities, powers and authorities of creation itself. His value, the value of his humanity is greater than all of them because it is united to his divinity. Okay, so because he is so divine, because he's so divine, yeah. his humanity is now better than everyone else's. Of greater value. Of a greater value. Yes. And then through that, he is able to uh, bear the sins of everyone who has ever existed and is ever going to exist yes. and die for their sins. Is yes. that what you're saying? Yes, and let, let me just come back to a point from yeah. the Old Testament. Because in the Old Testament, yeah. if you believe in what the Old Testament says, yeah. You accept now? Would you would you accept that a sheep yeah. is not of equal value to a human? Agreed. A sheep is not equal value to a human. Would you agree with that? No, I do not. Right. So you believe that? Wait, wait, wait. You believe that the Old Testament teaches that the value the the value of the life of a sheep is equal to the value of the life of a human? Well, technically, under the laws, it implies that because you can't murder. So if I murdered a lamb and I didn't eat, and I didn't and I killed it because I felt like it under under the laws I would have to be purged out of the bloodline of Israel I have to be stoned you, Can you show me where it says you should be stoned for killing a sheep Stoned for killing for murder yes do you know what murder is Yeah of course but we're not we're, to, we're talking That's about murder no. it doesn't matter if it's an animal bro. if it's an insect bro yeah? bro if it's murder is murder That's not what the bible says it's that's crime. not. That, that's not what it. That's not what it says. Yes, it does. No, thou shalt not murder. It yes. Does, it doesn't even say thou shalt that, not bro, kill. Bro, bro. One even, second. Yeah. Bro, bro. Shall we have a conversation or a shouting match? I'm not shouting. I'm trying to get my point. So across. I've got. I've heard your point. But I haven't finished. I've heard your point. Let me reply to it. Let me reply to it. I haven't finished. One second. You, you've just said. You've just said. You've just said. Right. Yeah. That you've just applied thou shalt not murder yeah. to anything. Yes. Right, but that's not what the Old Testament does. Yes, it does. Let me finish. Yeah. Because the Old Testament commands the Levitical priesthood to kill bulls, rams and pigeons. There's a difference between killing and murder. Right. Show me in scripture where it says you should stone someone for killing a sheep. You're not getting the point. Go on, make your point again. It doesn't specifically say you will be a uh, stone for killing a sheep. Right, yeah. But it specifically says if you murder. If you kill for your own selfish reasons, you shall be stoned. Is that your point? That's my point. Can I reply? Yes. Right. So the Decalogue that we find in Exodus 20, yeah. right, is talking about human to human relationships and human to God relationships. The first four commandments are about man's relationship to God and the remaining six are about man's relationship to man inside the covenant. When it says thou shalt not murder, mm -hmm. there is no one in the world apart from you that would try to argue that this applies to cattle. Yeah, everyone who knows, and everyone who knows the Decalogue, let me, can, finish, let, me finish, let 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 me finish. Yeah, go on. If you murder cattle that is not your own, there would be a punishment, but it would be the punishment of, like stealing. Yeah. So it would be a lesser punishment than murdering a human being. Mm -hmm. That's what the Old Testament law teaches. Mm -hmm. So it does not value the life of cattle as equal to the life of a human being. Mm -hmm. So that means when it's saying thou shalt not murder in the context of human to human relationships, mm -hmm. it's giving a certain intrinsic value to human life, mm -hmm. not to animal life. Murdering animal life that isn't your own would fall into stealing laws. Which Even means if it's a that. Wild animal. Which means that no, they've got no problem with hunting in the Old Testament. Yeah, hunting for food. If I kill the, if I kill the animal because I just didn't like how it looked. Bro, this is just, bro. I what, what, what would be the punishment for that? I just want to. I'm not get sure if the, the. Well, one second. You haven't even heard what I've said. You, you just said I don't. I'm not sure. You don't know what I was going to say. But you just said I'm not sure. So that's Which wasn't the end of the sentence. But that gives me the implication that you're not sure. Because you jumped to a conclusion before I'd finished the sentence. How can I jump to a conclusion if you've given, if you've given me because a, I haven't a strict finished, statement, I'm not sure. Because I haven't finished the sentence. Okay, finish. There you go. So, I am not sure if the Old Testament gives a punishment to cattle. That isn't the saying. That isn't saying that I agree that there is some kind of punishment 
for killing cattle or killing wild animals. When in doubt, go back to the law. And the law specifically states, thou shalt not murder. But you does murder. that's not applying to animals? Does it say it doesn't apply to animals? Yes. Where, where? Yes. Because when you look at the punishments that are connected yeah. to infringing the thou shalt not murder law, yeah. it's talking about human beings. Every example of the application of the thou shalt not murder rule yeah. involves humans. Okay. Show me one that doesn't. I can't show you one which doesn't. Because it doesn't. There isn't one there. Well, it, because it's not there doesn't mean that it wasn't an active law. So you've got to evidence that? Huh? Evidence that? No, some, some, the Bible doesn't give all examples, unfortunately. But these are your own private interpretations, bro. Yeah, they're, they're, my, they're my interpretations and it's valid because it clearly says, Thou shalt not murder. Bro, you need to study more. You really need to study more. The, the, the scriptures, the New Testament counsellors, the counsellors not to use private interpretation of the scriptures it says no prophecy was given by man every prophecy was given by the spirit of god and that we should not use personal private interpretation of the scriptures my one's not personal the, the, but it, it could be the, 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 one I'm second just, one, one second it. yeah but that's the problem that is your problem how is it a problem to read it it's a problem because Everyone has to read it. you are trying to read the scriptures in isolation to how the judeo-christian faith has interpreted those scriptures and that's why you've gone wayward in your understanding of those scriptures okay show me a jew that agrees with your interpretation of the old testament well all them jews those uh so-called jews may i add so you're hebrew israelite i'm not hebrew israelite i'm an israelite israelite, israelite. okay i can't i can't i can't say that i'm hebrew because the language is lost bro the israelite movement and the Hebrew Israelite movement is simply a cultural reaction to the pain of slavery. It's rooted in the made up fictitious fantasies of its founders that can't be traced any further back than a hundred years. They're all connected to a guy called Mar uh, Martin Garvey, I think his name is, or Mark Garvey or Matthew Garvey. Right? Marcus Garvey. Marcus Garvey. He wasn't even an Israelite. I know he wasn't. But his ideas is what gave birth to a whole bunch of different religions, including the nation of Islam and the Hebrew Israelites. Okay. They were influenced by Marcus Garvey. All right. Now, can I give you evidence? The, the, what, the, the one saying, bro, is that this is not a, this is an American religion. It's not it's not the religion of Israel. It's, God made man, the church man made has the religion of Israel. God made man, man made religion. The, if you go to the etymological dictionary and you find what church means, church comes from Circe, which is Greek. What does church mean? Church. Um, By the church. way, that's wrong. Yes, it, no, it's not. No, it comes from the Greek ecclesiam. No, it comes from Circe. Go and Google it right now. It, I've got, I've got, I've already checked it, Sam. Google really, it right now. Shall we I'm Google really, it right in front of you? I've, unfortunately, I don't have the book. In front let, of let me Google it for okay. you. Okay. Okay. This guy trusts Google, but you don't trust the books. Where they actually come from? No. Because you, you no, I trust Greek. Because you, un, you need to understand. Yeah. Sometimes the internet like to sanitize I, things. Bro. Yeah. I'm gonna show you. It comes from Circe. And Circe is a pagan god, a pagan god of witchcraft. That's where church comes from. Right, bro. Let me let me just show you what you you don't know what you're talking about. Okay, and also, right, look, bro, here it is, bro, look, yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> This is, if you're an Israelite, yeah. I want to encourage you to elevate yourself above this kind of nonsense. Because this kind of nonsense is oh, holding sorry, sorry. black. Is that, Let me finish. Sorry, it's Anglo -Saxon. Let it's me finish. My bad, it's Anglo Saxon. The word church comes from the Greek word ecclesia, yeah, which is exactly what I said to you. That's fine, and I, and right? I just corrected myself. Yes, and I great. Said, and it's, it's, right? It's, 
from the Anglo-Saxon. No. Anglo-Saxon word. No. It's called Sir King. That is the, the word church comes from the Greek word ecclesia. But the word ecclesia yeah. means gathered. It means brought out of into a gathering. The church, yeah. the church yeah. is the faith of Israel. You need to become a Christian. The kind of ignorance amongst the Israelites and the Hebrew Israelites and all of that group of people is holding the black community back. I'm not black. You are celebrating no, black. ignorance. Black means, you know what black means? Black means malin, evil. That's what it means. Black is a color of law. Everything is governed by law, by the law of the creator. Bro, you're not an Israelite. Huh? You're not an Israelite. Okay, so I'll, I'll bring you to this. Kumasi and Magdala. You can go check that in British, in the British Library, right? Yeah. Kumasi and Magdala, the story of two British campaigns in Africa. Yeah. That has an illustration from the author, who is uh, Henry Morton Stanley, right? A British colonialist. Yep. It's got an, he's got a drawing of all the Ghanaian priests. Yeah. Uh, all the uh, Ghanaian chiefs while they were um, while they were you know traveling around the area, right? That illustration is the only illustration ever in mankind which shows the 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 priestly garments of Israel, yeah? The priestly garments of Israel before the 1600s. Can I reply to that? Reply to that. Right. Brother, right? I, I, I'm going to address your point and then I'm going to leave you with a final comment. Yeah. Okay? So, the, the reality is that this doesn't prove anything. And the doesn't prove anything. No, it doesn't. And I'll explain why. I'll explain why. I'll explain why. It doesn't prove anything for a number of different reasons. They could be dressed like that because of the penetration of Jewish ideas or Jewish identity into Ghana at that time. It, Ghana. It could, it could be that they're dressing like that because of the penetration of Christianity into that region. That was Let me finish. That was Let me finish. Colonialism. Let me finish. That was before colonialism. That the Ethiopian you, church was in Africa before colonialism. Yeah, but Ethiopians were Ethiopia, in Ghana. Were Ethiopians in Ghana? They could have traveled there. They could have. But furthermore, but furthermore, have furthermore, so therefore, furthermore, what you're saying is flawed. furthermore, furthermore, is incorrect. furthermore, it could just be an accident of history in that a similarity emerges without them being connected. Or finally, and this is what I think is more realistic, because you don't know how artists worked at that time. And I'll give you an example. When they used to paint pictures of Jesus Christ and the life of Jesus Christ, they would use models from their own time and portray them dressed in the clothes that they wore at that time, even though those, those clothes were not historically accurate. That artist that you're talking about may have painted these people, it, well, for illustrated it, in that way that he did by using other imagery to fill the gaps, to romanticize Africa. And I think that's probably what happened. Nice. Now here's my nice. here's my commentary, my final comment. The, do, all the, do all the people in the illustrations agree with that? Well, we don't know what they thought. We don't even know if they were real people. My point to you, my point that I'm raising, and here's my final point, bro. Right? And I mean this in the nicest possible way. But you've fallen into the trap of knowing very little about a lot of things, okay. and not knowing a lot about anything. All right. And that, that, and you've you've sort of overestimated how much you know and understand. Okay. Yes. And I encourage you, bro, just sit down and do real Bible studies. Real Bible studies of the Old Testament, right? And go and sit with. Great. And go and sit with real learned people in the commentaries, because these people have studied the entire Bible. And let these things inform you, because you've fallen into the trap that the New Testament counsels you against, which is you have interpreted the Bible on your own in isolation. No, I've seen and the scriptures I've teach seen, you against that. I've seen historians such as Flavius Josephus who have, uh, who have equated uh, this JC myth, 
yeah, as um, just a Flavian creation. And it's true. No, Flavius Josephus did not say Jesus Christ was a myth. Huh? Flavius Josephus did not say Jesus Christ was a myth. I never said that. I'm saying that he was a lichen to because what happened was no not yeah, really yeah well if you i've got i've got the full volumes yeah and it specifically states that at the time or when uh when the flavian dynasty was uh working around yeah they wanted to inflict the israelites at the time how were they going to do that they wanted to inflict onto them a new god and all the things which flavian was doing was in correlation to what jc was trying to do so yeah? bro that, that's a completely separate argument and, and I'm but wrapping that, up. But that's what but, was, but, that was my main uh, thing. That's that what that, that was wasn't your main ask. thing. Your yeah, main was thing was ask. about your main thing was about can go can a man take the sins of another man? No, and I the answer saying, to that is yes. Jesus Christ is the sacrament. No, my, my main thing was, oh, can, how can a man uh, say, how can a man die for all the sins? How, how can a man save you from God? That, yeah, and we, we not save you from God. But how can a man save you? That's what I'm saying. And, and Jesus Christ does save us, bro. He really does save us. Because the value of his life is greater than all other things. I want to I wanna give you a gift, bro. I want to give you a gift. No, no, it's alright, it's alright. In the law, I don't think I'm allowed to accept gifts, so it's okay. You can keep that. Bro, the law says that you can't wear um, certain kinds of materials yeah, yeah. and that you need to be circumcised. Yes, and I'm circumcised. Right, and, and you know, what is it? Well, what's the, what's the Old Testament law about not wearing two kinds of cloth of the not, same? Not or wearing two Not kinds of wearing of mixed cloth? That's why I've got 100% cotton at home. Are you wearing 100% cotton right now? Unfortunately, I don't have the resources. Are these mixed that. cloths? Yes, of course. Yes. All of them. Uh, not so you're not. You know, this is 100% The trainers. Yeah, yeah, of course. Of course. All right, so you're not. You're not following Old Testament law, bro. I'm, I am. I just, unfortunately, in the in the, you're supposed to, you're supposed to love the God with all thy heart, all thy soul, all thy mind. That's yes. Why absolutely. Me. So if I'm unable to follow it all the time, due to, uh, um, due to literally. Um, due to an impedance through resources right. that still stop me from following it altogether. No, right. I try every time, every time, as much as I can, I will follow it. And at, that, and at this time, I can only follow it um, on the seventh day, which I where I have 100% full cotton clothing. So okay. yes, I do follow Bro, it. Bro, I, I want to I wanna encourage you. I'm going to try and give you this gift again, because I would like to give you a gift. Unfortunately, I can't. Okay. I do, but I, I want to encourage... I'll, I'll check your YouTube. Okay. Check your YouTube. It's, it's called Bob the Builder of Speaker's Corner or Soko Films. I'm on two channels. Okay, all right. But I'll just leave you with this point. Yeah. If you want the faith of Israel, you have to come into the church, because only the church has the faith of Israel. All right. It's really a pleasure speaking to you. Thank you. What's your name, bro? Uh, my signal is Michael. Michael. My, my pseudonym's Bob. Nice to meet you. God bless you. Okay. So I want to I wanna say, if you're an Israelite, if you're an Israelite, abandon, abandon the Israelite ideology. It's holding the black community back and the black community deserves better than the Hebrew Israelites. It is making you celebrate ignorance. If you want the faith of Israel, Accept the Lordship of Jesus Christ and enter into His Holy Mother Church. Let's debate. Praise the Lord. Let's debate. Our church lives. 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 Mohammed is dead. Caliphates are dead! Communism is dead! Socialism is dead! Our church lives! Our church lives! Our church lives! Our church lives! Our church lives!